Hey folks, welcome back to DCS. So last week I ordered a new AVA Thrustmaster stick base for my Warhog stick to replace the extremely old socket gimbal style base that it has, which is quite famous for being like imprecise and kind of shitty. The AVA base is a mechanical base that uses cams and springs and it allows you to be a lot more precise in, in the center area of the stick. And this is how most modern sticks are now. This is the first stick of this nature that I've ever had, so in this video we're going to sort of go over like how it's different for me and what kind of issues I ran into or whether it was good or bad and that kind of thing. So actually plugging the stick into the base was pretty much exactly the same as you'd expect with any other base. It just goes in and it works. You plug in, that's it. I did have to rebind my controls however, so that's what I'm doing on the screen right now. A lot of people often think that you actually need to have saved your control config to be able to load it again, but it's in there in the files from when you've set it up in the past, so you basically just run through what I just did on the screen. So you want to go to config input, pick the plane, pick the input, and then just load the file. Now, I assumed that that would just work perfectly, but I've found that with a few aircraft it doesn't completely copy over, and I think it might be something to do with how frequently the game actually saves your files when you change things. So like right here I discover upon taxiing that my nose or steering button didn't work and neither did my triggers, like the first, second D10, and also the pickle button. So for the F5 I had to rebind those three things, but everything else was already there. So when it comes to takeoff, my muscle memory was shot to pieces from my old stick, which is quite unwieldy. There's like an actual detent in the middle. It's very subtle, but it makes it quite difficult to make fine adjustments. This is completely done away with that. It's extremely precise in the middle, but the further to the edges you get, the harder it is to fight against. And I did change some spring tensions and some cams. I might put a community post up that goes into that in a bit more detail if you want to check that out. But my concern was that if I pull as hard as I'm used to pulling, I might tail strike, I might rip my wings off, I might bleed my energy off faster than I expect to. These dogfights we go through, I'm just going to talk you through how I combat that until I was a bit more used to it. So we found a frogfoot, and I thought, frogfoot, nice easy target, so rather than just looping over and using a missile because that's boring, I'll see if I can get him with guns. Now here I'm really extending super far in the climb because I was very fast on the way up and I know that if you pull hard in the F5 above like 450 knots you can rip your wings. And I don't know what constitutes pulling hard anymore. You'll see that I've put the joystick overlay on on the bottom left corner. Like the amount that I'd pull back on my old stick, the amount of that that I'd call pulling hard might not be pulling hard in this stick. So I really didn't pull very hard at all. I ended up doing an enormous loop and then trying to get guns on. This stick's very precise in the middle, like towards the center position. And that's where its greatest advantages are really. But that's also where <laughs> I'm not used to it being that precise. So. When it comes to fine motor control for those precision gun shots, that's what I'm struggling with most right now. If it's like a deflection shot where I'm pulling lead and holding it, that's fine. I'm managing that no problem at all. It's when they're flying straight and level and I'm having to very precisely waggle it up and down, that's where it's a struggle. So we find a pair of my 21s, there's going to be this guy and then another guy later on, and we just get the easiest missile kills of my life. I see that this guy's actually shooting at a friendly. I would have taken the time to go guns, but I didn't want him to kill him. I was late, as it turns out, but that's why we miss a lot, guy. EWR said there was another one my six, and I saw that Phantom just ate another missile. So I'm thinking that the other guy's probably somewhere nearby, and there he is. So he does seem to be aware of me. One of the harder things with the muscle memory being changed is that when I'm not looking forwards, it's harder for me to orientate myself because I'm used to moving the stick a certain amount to roll me so that my lift vector is pointing at the target. But that amount doesn't match what I'm used to anymore. So I can end up like pointing myself in the wrong place and then pulling like not where I want to go. He must have just lost visual, so yeah, another nice easy kill. But any time I'm flying knife edge near the deck or if I'm tracking a target and there's no visible bits of cockpit in the frame, that's where it's tricky at the minute because I just don't dare not look forwards when I'm making adjustments in case I'm not actually making them in the right direction. 
So we're very close to the deck here. Thankfully the target's dead ahead of me. But if I'd had to like look off 90 degrees, I would have to snap forward fairly frequently to know that I wasn't going to crash into the floor because I can't feel the slip like I used to be able to. And here, those fine motor control coming in. That looked fairly good, I think I just overled. And then I didn't want to make a snap correction in case I pulled past that wing rip point and killed myself, which would have been unfortunate. He ends up going in anyway. I'm not sure why, because he looked completely fine and no one actually got credit with the kill, so I think he must have just wing stalled himself into oblivion then. Farnham takes a shot at me with a sparrow, which I'm amazed he got a lock with, to be honest, because there's no way I'd manage to do that. And it takes this Phantom quite an annoyingly long time to realise that I'm not a MiG-21. So I'm kind of guarding against him for a while. As we go over, I realise that there's a hostile literally under me, so I'm going to hope that if I chase this guy, and the Phantom chases me, that he'll realise that I'm not the bad guy. <laughs> I think that might be a different funnel that just took a shot at him. But this is looking very nice, so this is the third time now that I've had to use like the finer controls to line a shot up, and I'm really taking my time with it. Positioning is everything here. If you've ever played a shooter game like Squad, people will say that it's not really about your aim, it's about your positioning. Because if you're in a point where you're in cover and if they shoot back at you, it doesn't really matter. And you can really take your time to get the shots in. And although you can't equate that to air combat in terms of using cover to limit how much you can be shot, it's the same in terms of your energy management. So if you end up making them quite slow, or just being around when they're quite slow, then obviously you can take more time in how you aim. So that's why that last kill worked out so nicely. But I found him still having a go at me, so he just merged off our left, and I can see an F1 in the distance. There's actually another one that's hot to my six. Not sure what that beep was to be honest, but anyway. I do chase this guy down for a while, but the F1's very fast, and I don't think this one has any intention of turning around. So he's essentially dragging me for his mate. And his mate is an F1 too, and he's much faster than I am, so I decide to abandon chasing this guy. The other one is closing in, and I'm not closing in on the guy that I'm chasing down, so it makes more sense to focus the one that I'm at risk to. You'll see that as I'm turning around here, I'm flat turning on the deck, but I keep snap glancing forwards to ensure that I'm not drifting left into the ground. As we get nose hot, I find the other F1 straight away because he just flushed, flushed, <laughs> splashed our phantom buddy. I can see that he's continuing his left turn, so I'm not going to follow him to the right. If he's just going to come back left, we'll just cut him off. Close the gap and use this opportunity to get some speed up. If you look at the joystick overlay, how tiny my adjustments are for how much turn right we get when we're this quick in the F5. I do think that with more practice, I will grow to massively love this stick, but at the moment, I just feel like I'm missing shots that I'd never missed before. Like, this is that energy management perfection, like squad aiming positioning thing I was talking about a minute ago. Absolutely perfected it, but I didn't really want to pull hard enough to hit center mass in case I bled too much speed off or ripped a wing because I just don't have the same feel and I know you never have feel because the controls aren't actually linked to the jab because it's just a simulation but over time you do gain a sort of phantom limb syndrome kind of feel I, th I think I do anyway and I don't have it yet so it's making dogfights quite hard, although I'm quite proud of that shot. But then I stick this one for way too long to finish the kill. And my left wing clips his wreck. Um, and it falls off. So... Yeah. I shouldn't have... Uh, I shouldn't have secured the kill, I should have just let him crash. So, the F5, I feel like that went pretty well. We're going to transition into the F1 now. F1's not a fly-by-wire aircraft either. And it's another thing where energy management is super important. Except this time you actually get like cockpit instruments that help you understand how hard you're pulling. So on the left side of the hood, there's a bar that goes from 0 to 22, 23. 
You can see that little green light on the left there. I know I nearly rammed a frog foot, by the way, but we'll we'll uh, we'll pretend that didn't happen. So I've now got a visual prompt of how hard I'm pulling. So there's a phantom coming in. We've got him radar locked. He's actually quite high in the screen right now, not where the orange block was, top of the hood glass. And I'm very low. It's getting pretty dusky and dark, and I know that the phantom's hood glass is quite tinted. So I'm basically abusing the fact that he can't see me if I'm against the ground to close in, and I was hoping to get a head on snapshot. You also know that I'm not in afterburner, just to make it that much harder for him to see me. So we go for the radar lock as we get close. I'm hoping to get a head on shot, but he literally flies through the bullets. He is in afterburner, and look how easy he is to track, even when I'm not zoomed in all the way. So as I was saying with the F5, I'm just not sure how hard I can get away with pulling. I don't want to overdo it and get too slow, because the Phantom will outrate me if he manages to keep his speed. So I'm going up high and following him round above, because that way if I do end up slow because I pull too hard, I can always dive back down for energy. He's still in burner. He came around that circle a lot more than I thought, but I don't think he can actually see me. And I clearly lost a lot more speed in that maneuver than I thought, because I didn't catch up as I dived back down. He's actually managed to reverse his turn. So we're just going to do the same thing again. We're going to go up. I'm using the uh, cockpit instrument to make sure I'm not pulling into the red on the AOA gauge. Helping me to see him with those flares there. Still an afterburner. So he's begun to climb now. There's that green icon on the left where the AOA meter is, so I'm keeping it in the green. I'm going to retain the energy as we come up. Just notice that my slats are down, so I'm going to force them up manually, just to ensure that we're not bleeding more speed than we need to. I don't need turn rate right now, I need to maintain speed. I've also noticed that I'm ruddering left a tiny bit. My pedals don't really have a center detent, so I can often end up pulling when I don't realize that I am. That warning beep was because I put the combat flaps down and we must have just exceeded 300 knots, so they were coming back up, and that was the, the horn warning to tell me that I was overspeeding them before they brought themselves back in. So I can tell from the sound, the wind over the wings, they're actually pretty quick right now. We fired a missile, but he did see it and he did fly it, he avoided it, so he does know that we're here. I was gonna go for a second shot there whilst he was completely nose cold, because the Phantom's rear with visibility is absolute dog ass. But he starts pulling and flaring, so I don't want to waste another one. We're gonna pull up straight rather than following him up, so that we get more altitude for less energy burn, because we're not turning as hard through the climb. By doing this we managed to just equalise with him, instead of pointing our nose we'd end up overshooting potentially if we did that, so by doing it this way we managed to stay behind him. He's going to reverse his turn again. If I were him I'd have just gone into a rate and tried to come around on me, but he just keeps reversing his turn. And if I were more used to the F1, I probably would have known that I could pull a lot harder to get closer to him a lot sooner, but because this is very new to me right now, I'm really apprehensive about overdoing it. So he's trying to get me into a rolling scissor here, and I thought I'd get the shot there, but I didn't. So rather than sticking with him through this, I'm just going to cut my losses and climb, because I can see he's not in burner. The Phantom's very heavy, there's no way he's going to come back up with me through this. If he tries, he's just going to make himself more slow, and he does try. So again, I'm just going to cut my losses and climb. He's actually gone out of burner, which is an interesting decision. And we're just going to keep going up. Burner's coming back in for him there, look, that'll help me see him against the ground. As we're coming up into the cloud, I am worried about losing him here, so he starts to come down. He did fire a missile there, but it didn't try. And he is completely stalled out, look, he's just hanging there. But I can't pull hard enough to get the nose around without making myself slow, so I'm opting to ease off the pull, keep the AOA in the green, 
I'm just going to do a very gradual loop over and see if I can work around behind him. Transition it to the flat, a flat turn because I don't think he knows where I am anymore. Annoyingly he turned into me rather than away so that kind of denied me a shot there. And now I am pulling hard because I want to win this one circle. And I'm hoping I'll get a shot here. And we do. Not sure what I did to him, but this definitely fell off. So we're going to continue pulling hard. Now that I know I've got hits in, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to wrap this fight up because the Phantom really doesn't like taking damage. It's very heavy and asymmetric lift really fucks it over quite hard. Got him locked up with the ACM radar mode to try and aid the radar gun sight. He is an inverter, which is interesting. Lose the radar locker. Really unfortunate time right there. So we've pretty much got him dead to rights now, as long as I don't overshoot. And at this point I'm basically just pulling as hard as I feel like I need to based on what I see, which is probably pretty much what I'd have done with the old stick, because the F1 is quite a handful when you get it into this sort of speed regime. And we managed to clip his tail off. So that worked out pretty well. There go the shoots. So I'd say that I'm adjusting relatively well. The next two kills are missile kills, so not that much finesse required, really, but I'm running in very low to the deck to try and get used to how it feels. Didn't have visual yet, I was trying to find them on the radar, but the uh, 530 Seeker, even though we're still about 7 miles away, 8 miles away, the 530 Seeker spots them. In fact, we're even more, 9, 10 miles away. So there's a guy very high, there's a guy in the cloud, the higher cloud on the right, the dark one. And there's a third guy to the left that's just launched on someone. And there's another one in the center climbing directly upwards. So the top guy just died, so he was the friendly. We've got a C-101 that's stalling out below the upper cloud layer. There's another phantom high going right under that wreck. We go for the high guy just because his energy state will be the most problematic for us. And the 530s are quite good for a sort of high aspect lock. So we shoot one off at him. That's the big chungus missile. And it has quite decent aspect capability, so we managed to kill him. I come out of burner after entering it because I don't want to make myself easy to spot. I'm trying to get low quick because I'm hard to spot against the ground than I am if I'm skylining. Although when they're all in such close proximity to me, it's going to be harder for them to look up and spot me regardless. We really look out and see one of the Phantoms going vertical right in front of me. So we decided to hit the burner just to get the nose around a bit faster. And we've got one aim 9 p remaining, so we'll get that off on this guy. And then the C101 at the minute is not hard me. And the next closest contact's about 18 miles away, so we're going to hit this guy. Thankfully it connects. I did contemplate going for the C101, but if he's staying low it's going to be impossible to see him. I don't really trust the radar gun sight on something that small, so we just decided to go back and land. It's unfortunate I didn't get to land in the F5, because I really feel like landing takeoff and formation stuff will be where this new stick base really comes into its own. The old base that I had, the original Warthog base, it actually has like a physical detent in the centre. Ah oh yeah, so there's a Phantom coming in four miles away. So what I do is turn off my nav lights and my landing light, which I usually turn on just to make sure that no one takes the active when I'm trying to land and I end up ramming them because it's always very annoying. But I figured the risk of being shot down here is greater than the risk of ramming someone, so I turn everything off. And he actually ends up flying past me without seeing me. <laughs> so that was definitely the right decision. I was really expecting to eat a Fox 2 then. But anyway, so the precision that you get towards the centre of the stick on this new base is so much better than it ever was on the Warthog. It's absolutely effortless to make little tiny AOA adjustments and stay on speed with this stick. 
compared to how it was before and you really need to feel the difference to know what I'm talking about. The trade-off is that the extent of the stick's input, like towards the outer edge, is when you're pulling all the way. It feels a little bit less precise because the harder you pull to the edge, the stiffer the spring tension gets, rather than it staying consistent throughout the entire range, which is how the Warthog's old gimbal base used to be. And I'm not sure which I prefer right now. I think a hybrid of the two would be ideal, but obviously that's never going to happen because it's just physically impossible. So for now, I'm enjoying the precision of the center, but I do feel like I'm quite limited in my roll input just because of how much effort it takes to roll that far. And I could put a weaker spring in, but then that would make it harder to make like rough shot adjustments quickly without overdoing it because the spring tension wouldn't be there. It's quite a difficult balancing act to be honest, but as I get more used to this, I'm sure that the increased control towards the center will be worth the differences to the outside edges of the sticks like max deflection but if you stick around in future videos then i'm sure i'll comment on it further as i get more used to it later on i'll be flying the viper with it which is obviously a fly-by-wire system and i used to really dislike how the viper handled with the warthog the old base because you had to really like push it a long way to get anything out of it and i wonder whether this might be a bit better for more modern jets than older ones which is a bit unfortunate given i fly the old stuff but don't take my word as gospel right now because i've literally had an hour and a half using it this was literally just a first impressions video but anyway if you like what you see you want to see more hit the subscribe button if you want to help support the channel financially then you can join as a member or buy a model through air models and uh, you can always hop in the discord if you want to get stuck in also maybe not the best video to ask this on but this last weekend was a hell that loose free to play weekend and it's the first time i've really delved into a shooter since i got my computer like six years ago but i was actually having a blast with it so i'm just wondering if any of you would be interested in seeing some diversification into other games on the channel probably starting with hell that loose so let me know thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you in the next one cheers